Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're going to make the barrel-aged zombie. Now, we love throwing things in barrels. That's right. Mm -hmm. And this is a particularly great cocktail to put into an oak barrel. Mm -hmm. It's, like, just packed full of flavor to begin with. Right. Right. So, like, what's one more flavor on top of it? But it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. It sort of mellows out the cocktail after it's been in there about a week. Right. And then it's fun to watch it evolve because it even gets more mellower, richer. It starts picking up some vanilla notes mm -hmm. from the barrel. And you have, a, you know, all sorts of vanilla in these things because they've been aged in barrels, too, these rums. Right. Right. And so it makes for a great cocktail. Mm -hmm. Very good. If you don't have a barrel, you can buy one, right? Right. We have a tools and technique video to show you how to maintain it, where we got ours, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we have a single serving variety of this cocktail, too. That's right. And we actually also age it in a wineskin. Yeah. To leather our zombie. We have a leather zombie, which is good, too. Mm -hmm. It's an abota. So there's a separate video for that. Mm hmm and we encourage people to use this barrel or the bota only because there's so many gosh darn ingredients right. that if you make one it's going to like take you an hour <laughs> this it's way like, you can make it all right age it add some more flavor to it and then just tap it whenever you want one yep mm -hmm. and phil has actually fashioned some leather straps so he can carry his around his neck <laughs> because you never know when you want a zombie like one of those dogs right yeah <laughs> now this is of course don beach's 1934 classic tiki cocktail, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Secret for many years until Jeff Berry and his team of spies <laughs> figured out the secret ingredients in, in these recipes. Because Don right. was very secretive about his tiki cocktail. He was. Right, Often right? his employees uh, had no idea, you know, because he used different kind of syrups and everything and wouldn't let them know what the yeah. syrups were. So. And if they found out, suddenly there was no, there was no bartender there that night, right? <laughs> They I disappeared. Don't know. Maybe. <laughs> so, so for this cocktail, you need an aged rum. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, the aged rum was a Jamaican rum. We're going to use the Kirk and Sweeney here today. You need a gold rum. Traditionally, we're going to use this Bacardi Eight here for the barrel. You need a high proof Demerara rum. We have the lemon heart here for that. Some falernum, which is a sweet syrup, that's sort of clove heavy. Grenadine. We're using our homemade grenadine here, and we have a video to show you how to make that. Or you can use store-bought grenadine. We like this employees-only brand here. Cinnamon syrup, which was one of the secret ingredients, right? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't really buy that, but you have to make it. And it's simple. We have a video on that, too. Mm -hmm. Sugar, water, cinnamon sticks. Yeah, it's not rocket science. Easy. Come on, Don. Really? <laughs> Some Angostura bitters. A little bit of absinthe. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, you would have had some lime juice and grapefruit juice. Right. Right. Grapefruit juice being the other secret ingredient. Mm -hmm. But in a barrel, citrus doesn't work too well, does it? No, it doesn't. The uh, pulp kind of solidifies itself together as it's aging. So instead, we use lactart, yeah. um, which gives the, the tartness to it. Yeah, that's a nice tartness. This is made for cocktails and stuff by mm -hmm. the Art of Drink guys. And that substitutes nicely in this cocktail. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. We're yeah. going to add everything right to our barrel. We've made certain that the spigot is off, right? Right. You only open that, have that open once, and you learn your lesson <laughs> quick, right? All right, so we're gonna add everything right to our barrel, mm -hmm. starting with the rums. And it'll be like a pour off, Phil, won't it? Right. <laughs> this is always the funnest part. Yeah. I've got a heavier bottle. This Kirk and Sweeney thing could be a weapon. <laughs> hey, you got bigger hands, you can actually hold on to it. I'm gonna cramp <laughs> doing that, Phil, seriously. There we go. Oh. All right, I'm going to do the uh, Demerara rum. Mm -hmm. You're going to do the Falernum, eight and a half ounces. Yep. So this is a 750, we need 500 milliliters of the Demerara rum. So we've taken out 250 milliliters from this standard size bottle. Yep. Right. That gives us 500. Exactly. Good thing you can do the math. <laughs> oh, well, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? How many of these zombies have you had already? Yeah, I don't today? know. I'm anxious to get this thing on the shelf again. <laughs> All right, so the grenadine, we need three ounces and three ounces of our cinnamon syrup mm -hmm. also. And if you put the cinnamon syrup, I mean, look at the size of the jars that we make. If you put it in a very clean bottle, it'll last like for a year, mm -hmm. right? We always say like six to eight weeks just so we don't get sued by somebody. Right. But you, you get this bottle clean, we put it in the top shelf, we clean it. 
we put it the, then we put it in the top shelf of the dishwasher and run it on the steam cycle. Mm -hmm. It's like an autoclave. Right. So it like keeps it clean. If you start seeing things float in there like mold, you know, it's like don't use it. That's exactly. sort of the key. Yep. So we got three ounces of that. There we go. Yep. We're going to do two ounces of the lactart. That gives us our citrus notes. Lactart is a 10% solution of lactic acid. For those chemists out there who like want to make it in their basement, I guess. Sure. <laughs> All right, then we need the Angostura bitters, two thirds of an ounce. And finally, the absinthe, which is sort of the mouthwashy component of this, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like scope, but that's the closest thing you could like. <laughs> if someone says, what's the absinthe like? You would say scope, right? It's got like a black licorice kind of flavor to yes, it. Yeah, it's yeah. packed with flavor. One third ounce of absinthe. I always want to say my absinthe joke, but it's so corny I never <laughs> say it. There we go. All right. So we'll let that sit there. Enjoy it from day one, of course. Mm -hmm. It's just like a regular zombie. Now, a single serving zombie, you make in a blender, right? You add ice, blend it for a few seconds. And that puts a little water in the cocktail. Okay, there's no water in here. So when you serve this, what you want to do is in a large wine glass or a double old fashioned glass, you want to put a big ice cube and pour the room temperature cocktail over the ice. And then you want to swirl it and just let the cocktail sit for about 60 seconds. That will allow the ice to melt enough so that all these high-proof spirits in here will tone down a little bit and become perfectly drinkable. Mm -hmm. Let it sit on your shelf, watch it evolve, and enjoy your barrel-aged zombie. Cheers. Cheers.